Good day, students. Um, my name is Don Zanjari um, of the Ge uh, Department of Geology and Mining, Faculty of Natural Sciences, National State University, Kepi. Um, we shall be looking at mollusks, and um, of course, we shall also, after the introduction, introduction, we shall also look at the the um, Valvivia, the, the, the phylum Valvivia under Molluscs. So we shall look at the basic morphology of Molluscs and we shall look at also the classification of Molluscs. And then we shall also look at uh, the class Valvivia, sorry, the phylum Valvivia and the, the systematic paleontology of bivalves, the morphology of bivalves, the evolution of bivalves and the differences between bivalves and brachiopods that we we'll have our take home. Of course, uh, after our last class, um, you know, we look at brachiopods. Now we shall deal with the second largest volume of invertebrates uh, in the animal kingdom, that is the mollusca. Majority of mollusks are marine animals, but a few of them live in freshwater or on land. It includes a wide range of family animals such as the oysters, the clams, and the mussels, the snails, the slugs, the whales, and the limpets. The nautiluses, the octopuses, the cuttlefish, the chitons, and um, the two shells, such as the scarp for powder. Mollusks, in general, are unsegmented, soft body animals. Mollusks can be divided into four important groups of bivalves, the gastropods, the cephalopods, and the chitons. So in this unit, we will discuss the basic organization and classification of mollusks, then we will go further to discuss the bivalves. In terms of basic morphology, if you remove the hard external shell of a mollusk, then you will find that a mollusk is a soft, elongated, and unsegmented animal having a head, a muscular foot, mantle, gill structures, and viral mass. So the head comprises sensory organs and mouths. It's situated on the anterior side of the shell. So foot is a flat, saw-like structure which serves as a primary mechanism for locomotion. Mantle covers the dorsal and the lateral parts of the animal and has a sheet of tissue that secretes the shell. So the animal uses gills for respiration that are placed posteriorly. The visceral mass comprises the internal organs for digestion, excretion, and circulation. The shell is the main hard part of mollusks, which is calcareous in nature. Classification of mollusks. Phylum mollusks is divided into five classes based on the differences in general shell forms and their characteristics, mood of life, nature of food, and certain other soft parts. Here it is a significant to note that um, the nature of shell is considered an important feature in the molluscan classification. So the division of classes with characteristics, features, and age are given in this table. Um, the class Valvavia, of course, has two valve, nature of the shell, Valves join along the dorsal hinge line with teeth, sockets, and ligament, no head, where developed food and gills are modified for respiration and fit feeding. Examples under the class Bavavia are the oysters, the mussels, the clams. And um, the age of the Bavavia, Bavavia class is between the early Cambrian to recent. Class gastropoda, large multiple foods on the ventral side, single valve. As univalve, qual shape, head is well developed with eyes and other sense organs. Examples are snails, slugs, whales, and limpets. Of course, the age is between late Cambrian to recent. Then, cephalopoda. Of course, they are advanced, intelligent mollusks having well developed head and sensory organs. Examples are the nautiluses, the octopuses, and the cuttlefish. The age of the class of Halopoda is between the late Cambrian to recent. Then the Amphinera, shell is segmented with eight plates, broad and flat foot and series of gill pairs. Examples are the Chitons, the age between Devonian to recent. Now let's look at uh, the class uh, by Valvia. Valvia is the second largest class of mollusks which includes cockles, the mussels, the oysters, the clams, sheepworms, and the scallops. 
Bivars consist of twin valve shell, shell made up of two almost similar valves that gives them a superficial resemblance to back report but varies in shell morphology and symmetry. So the bivars are bilaterally symmetrical molluscs in both soft and hard parts in which the mantle envelops the gills, foot and the visceral mass. So in addition, the mantle also secretes a calcareous shell which consists of two lateral valves which are united dorsally. So they vary in size from less than one millimeter to one meter in length but the majority of them are not more than 10 centimeters in length. This is the systematic paleontology of bivalves. Of course, bivalves are classified under the kingdom Animalia, subkingdom Metazoa, and the phylum Mollusca. The class, of course, is bivalvia, and the subclass is we have Paleotaxodonta, then we have the class Cryptodonta, then uh, the subclass Teriomorphomia. Then the, the subclass Paleoheterodonta, then subclass Heterodonta, then the Anomalodos Meta. I repeat, the subclasses under the class Bavavia are Paleotasodonta, Cryptodonta, Teriomorphia, Paleoherodonta, Heterodonta, Anomalodesmata. The class Bavavia is classified into six subclasses based on certain characteristic features, e.g. the dentition, the shell, microstructure, the hinge structure, the anatomy of the stomach, and type of gill. Common genera of bivalves are the pectin, the ostrea, the brifi, the inoceramus, the trigonia, the cadita, the pina, the mytilus, the arca, the nucala, and the electroiania. Morphology of bivalves. The soft parts of such as the mantle, the gills, and the foot of bivalves are covered by a hard exoskeleton, which is made up of two valves. In most cases, the valves are equal in size, asymmetrical in outline, and essentially mirror images of each other. The valves are secreted by the mantle and are made up of calcite. But in few cases, valves with arrogonite composition are also known. In bivalves, the two valves are named as right and left valves because they are located to the right and left side of the animal. So each valve has a nose-like pointed apex which marks the region of initial growth of the shell that is known as beak. Beak usually curves towards the anterior end of valves. The umbo is the region of maximum curvature of each valve close to the beak and situated on the dorsal margin of the shell. So in most of the bivalves, the two valves are joined together along their dorsal margin by means of elastic ligaments and by interlocking mechanism of teeth and socket. If you see the internal surface of the valves, you can find the other features such as the muscle scars, the pallia line, the pallia sinus, the teeth and socket. So muscle scars are one of the important features of bivalve morphology. Indeed, these are the impressions or attachment sites left by the soft adductor muscles and commonly referred to as adductor impressions or adductor scars. Many bivalves have two adductor scars, one on the posterior margin, known as the posterior adductor scar, and the other on the anterior margin, described as the anterior adductor. Of course, this, uh, the schematics are showing those uh, view of uh, the extra morphology of the bivalve, and then the one with figure 1.4 is showing the left half of the bivalve, showing the internal morphology. So based on the nature of adductor scar, bivalves are described as the following. We have uh, dimarium, that's when two adductor scars are present. Isomarium, in this case, both scars are equal in size. Then we have any somarium, in this form, the posterior scar is larger than the anterior adductor scar. Then we have the monomarium, includes those forms that are having one muscle scar only. So in dimerian forms, two adductor scars are connected to each other by a linear depression that runs more or less parallel to the ventral margin of the valve. This linear depression is known as pallial line. In some cases, the pallial line exhibits an indentation or a fold near the posterior adductor scar, which is termed as pallial sinus. It is interesting to note that muscles play a significant role in closing and opening of valves. When adductor muscles located anteriorly 
and posteriorly. Contract only then, valves close, and when these muscles relax, the ligament expands and valves open ventrally. So we have described earlier in this section that two valves are joined dorsally by teeth and sockets. So the portion of dorsal margin of valves where teeth and sockets occur is known as hinge line or cardinal margin. The area line between the hinge line and the umbo of each valve is called hinge area. In some cases, the hinge area is divided into lunar and escutcheon. Lunar is a heart shaped area that occurs in front of the beak. An escutcheon is an elongated depression present posterior to the beak. So the hinge line may be straight or curved and bears teeth and sockets. So both valves bear teeth and sockets alternatively and teeth of one valve fit into the corresponding socket of the opposite valve. So this mechanism prevents the lateral motion of valves and keeps them tightly closed, making it harder for a predator to open the shell by twisting the valves. Teeth and socket are present in the big region of the valves. The teeth present below the beak are termed as cardinal teeth and those that occur in front towards uh, the posterior. Now, in, this is um, showing the internal view of valves of bivalves, showing different types of dentition. So, of course, the A is the tadzodont, the B is the schizodont, and the C is present the heterodont. In bivalves, the term detention is used to describe the arrangement of teeth, sockets, and other closely related features. So, there are three types of dentition present in bivalves. Because, like I said earlier, the taxodont, the schizodont, and the hydrodont. Taxodont is a primitive type of dentition where teeth are numerous, more or less equal in size, and arranged in a superior pattern. For the schizodont, it includes two or three thick teeth with prominent grooves. And then the heterodont, it comprises both cardinal and lateral teeth, which are not uniform and less in number. So the viral shapes, uh, like in dentitions, are tamas and the tulus shells. Evolution of bivalves. Like brachial bivalves also have a very long geological history. The earliest bivalves are known from the early Cambrian, but they became diverse during the Ordovician. Unfortunately, till date, no bivalves have been reported from the Middle and Late Cambrian times. Several groups of bivalves arose during the Ordovician expansion, such groups have taxodont and heterodont hinges and a wide range of uh, heating habits such as uh, pulp feeding, shallow borrowing, epifaunal, and also the infernal feeding. So after the Ordovician expansion, bivalve diversity stabilized, but they did not emerge as a diverse group during the Paleozoic. The non-marine bivalves first arose in the Devonian and became abundant in the Capitan Ferros. Widths of column represent the abundance of bivalves in a particular period. Bivalves underwent a second grade radiation during the early Mesozoic. Many new groups appeared during this radiation, several of which successfully adapted to the epifauna uh, mode of life. Epifauna bivalves also diversified in the Mesozoic. One group of bivalves, namely the Rudis, originated in late Jurassic and became extinct at the end of the Cretaceous. So ex, uh, except with this, most other bivalves crossed the late Cretaceous mass extinction event and survived till death. Difference between bivalves and brachypods. As you know, the shells of bivalves and brachypods comprise two valves. For this reason, bivalves are often confused with brachypods. For correct identification of this Invertebrates. It is pertinent to know the differences between them. The major difference between them, uh, given in this table, of course, when you look at um, the short shape of bivalves, bivalves have two valves which are equal in size. For brachypods, they have two valves that are not equal in size. In terms of shell composition, bivalves uh, shells. Uh, composed of calcite or aragonite, but for brachypods, it's just made up of calcite. You don't see aragonite in the uh, brachypods. That's of shell symmetry, 
the bivalves have uh, bilateral symmetry with a plane of symmetry between the valves. While brachial parts, of course, are bilateral symmetrical with plane of symmetry along midline of each valve. In terms of dentition, bivalves have, of course, teeth and sockets are usually present in each valve. But for brachiopods, teeth occur on the pedicle valve and sockets occur on the brachial valve. Inarticulate brachiopods lack teeth and sockets. In terms of hinge mechanism, uh, for bivalves, they have ligaments, they have teeth and sockets interlocking the valves. Well, for the brachiopods, teeth fit into sockets in the opposite valve. Ligament is usually absent. In terms of pedicle opening, of course, it is absent in, uh, in the bivalves and then it's present in brachiopods. Your take home. From the specimen um, A and B, the other one is showing uh, the external morphology, while the B is showing the internal morphology. One, you are to identify the sample and outline the systematic paleontology of the fossil from the kingdom to genus, is to the genus level. And then to make a simple sketch of the sample above, and briefly describe its morphology. And then three, mention its stratigraphic range. And then four, briefly discuss its paleoecology. Thank you for your attention and I'll see you.